Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd and it is Throwback Thursday. Now, I'm still trying to get through all the requests from the live stream we did Sunday. And I'm going to get through them. I'm going to I'm going to I'm doing all of them. It may take a little time, but I'm getting to all of them. But it's Throwback Thursday. Unfortunately or fortunately, I'm not really sure. Gundamer on our Gunmanson from Iceland. You Icelandic Viking you as he's probably right now wandering through the plains of Iceland photographing volcanoes. Apparently that's his thing. But Gundmer says, Gunmunder says, hey, old school, the sugar cubes hit. Hmm. Now, normally I'd be like, tell me about this band. But everyone knows that the sugar cubes were a band from Iceland, really big in 1991 or 92. Now, 1992 was the year that I graduated high school. So there's no way you're gonna be able to pull this one off that I'm not gonna know who the sugar cubes are. Problem is, I didn't like them then. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, 1992 was a weird time for pop music. Um, classic pop was clashing with hip hop and hip hop type sounds, but not in a good way. Like they didn't know who they were, they didn't understand each other, and pop music was trying to integrate hip hop sounds into itself without understanding what it was all about. So it was kind of weird. It was it was odd. You had like little pop stuff going on with hip hop turntable scratching and da 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 da, you know, keyboards that were more that you would get with from Salt and Pepper back in the day. And it was coming into pop music and it was it was a weird time for pop music. It really was. Which explains why Metallica was so big at the time. <laughs> Just saying. People think that hair the end of hair metal is what caused grunge music. No. It was the it was the poorly integrated it was the poor integration of pop music trying to take on the mantle of hip hop when it shouldn't have done so. So hip hop was still Booming in 1992. It was huge, okay? And it needed to be that way. But pop kept trying to pull from it. So a lot of pop music back then was really awkward. It was awkward. And so you had hip hop was huge. Metal got huge because Metallica released the Black Album. So you had metal and hip hop going big and pop was kind of lost. So in that, Nirvana comes in, grunge, there you go. Some people say that grunge was because metal was dying, and it's not the case. It's because pop music had no idea what to do with itself, so everyone just kind of gravitated to, to grunge because it was the new thing, because nobody liked what was going on. Which brings us to the Sugar Cubes. Now, some of you may have never heard of the Sugar Cubes, but you have heard of their lead singer, whether it be for a good reason or a bad reason. The Sugar Cubes in 1992 had a very young front lead singer. Similar to uh, Melody of Liliac, but more like Melanie Martinez. If you've ever heard of Melanie Martinez, you know what I'm talking about. If you've never heard of Melanie Martinez, a lot of people compare Melanie Martinez's artistry in her music and her stylization to the lead singer of this band. You don't know who it is? Ah! Let me help you out. It's Throwback Thursday. My name is Old School Nerd. Like and subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. Uh, the link to this Sugar Cubes hit with their amazing front singer that everyone knows her name, but nobody knows what the hell's going on. Uh, will be in the description below. Check us out on oldschoolnerd.com. We have all of our social media, the Patreon, and the merchandise store. Okay, Mr. Iceland. Yesterday you and pelted us with Iceland's Eurovision insanity. Now let's get back to the part where all that Icelandic music insanity began with the Sugar Cubes and their amazing front singer that nobody understands but everyone knows, Bjork. Get out of the way, Gundmanson.
Okay. Um, you know I stop videos as soon as they start because I have to put something in there. Number one, um, the use of dolls in an abandoned doll factory, clowns, and hip-hop turntable scratching is going to be a little unnerving for most of you. I just need you to breathe. Remember, it's just a video. We're all going to make it out of here on the other side, and I promise to play some amazing metal music after. Promise. Also, Bjork was very young back, back then, and she, her voice is going to make you go, oh my God, her voice is so pure and amazing, and it's awesome until she talks. <laughs> and then when she talks, the first thing in your head is, what did she say? Bjork was Lady Gaga wearing a meat dress before Lady Gaga was even a thing. <laughs> Seriously. Bjork would... <clears throat> we all remember the swan dress. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. Bjork swan dress. And then go, <laughs> why? Okay, the whole holding herself and angst and just whatever, that's not a performance. That's really her. That's all the time. It's not performance. It's Bjork. Now, her voice is very soft, soothing. It's, it's clear. It's wonderful. That's why people fell in love with the Sugar Cubes. That's why they fell in love with Bjork as a single artist. But at some point, you realize performance meets reality and it's like oh she probably does play with dolls and has clowns running around in an abandoned warehouse at her house hey don't knock the artist appreciate the art now saying that i'm gonna close my eyes and continue Okay, here's the thing. You have to understand that nowadays with some of the videos that I've done reactions to and some of the injury we've seen from bands. Hell, just yesterday, we talked about a, <laughs> a plant uh, goddess from outer space who lands on Earth and plays drums for a band called Sick and Beautiful, right? So imagery is kind of desensitized now in 2021. But imagine back in 1992, when, okay, <laughs> Bill Clinton wasn't even president yet, okay? We're still technically in the Reagan years, even though it was President Bush, the first one. So, <laughs> coming off of that, this stuff was freaking people out. There were people, I remember there were parents that were getting on TV and screaming to stay away from Bjork and the sugar cubes because they were making dolls have sex in their videos. Imagine those poor people when they saw WAP from Cardi B this year. <laughs> okay, this is that stuff I was talking about. The dent, da da the, the, the keyboards with the, with the turntable scratching, that was a hip hop thing for years. And then it, it got pulled into pop and hip hop artists didn't like that. They didn't like 
that pop artists were taking that musical style. And it made songs a little odd. It didn't. Now, going back and listening to this now, we're like, nah, it's nothing. Because it's not. Musically, music has progressed since then. But back then, this song was breaking a lot of rules that were unwritten. Young, pretty, white, European girls fronting a pop band do not use hip-hop sounds or music in their songs. You don't. It was the line you just didn't cross. Bjork didn't care, and people loved her for it. And it's kind of cool. She was one of the first people to really break barriers back and forth, and she's a very unassuming person. For her, it's all about the art, no matter how... (laughs) I mean, mm, that clown is playing an accordion with a furry hat on, as a furry. This was before there were furries. Think about that, okay? So this imagery may seem tame to all of us now, but back then, this really shocked people, and it really pushed limits. And when this thing came out on MTV, there were people calling for it to be taken off because the imagery was too... The, The dolls don't have sex, and it's just clowns. But the fact that there was so much of it, people were like, it's disturbing, but they couldn't explain why. Also, this is also around the same time that every album had labels on it for disturbing lyrics. But Bjork and the Sugar Cube's lyrics were never disturbing, so they couldn't put a warning label on it. But her imagery, this is a tame song compared to some of her other stuff. Go look at Bjork. Her stuff always pushes limits because that's her artistry, okay? Similar to Melanie Martinez, does the same thing with her artistry in like when she did the baby girl, school girl thing. But her lyrics were so aggressive. People were like, whoa. I mean, for Olivia's 16th birthday, we took her to Houston to see Melanie Martinez live in concert. That was her sweet 16th birthday present. And I saw videos and it was nuts. (laughs) It was a good show. Melanie Martinez, uh, if you've ever seen Melanie Martinez, in her music videos, like there's a song, is there a song called Orange or a song called Strawberries or something? Whatever the song is, if the song's about a food, they would pipe in the smell of that food into the arena. So if there's a song called Strawberries, you smell strawberries in the air during the song. People like Bjork, Sugar Cubes, Melanie Martinez, Lady Gaga, there are always people that try to push the limit first to shock the public into getting attention. Once they have it, they're like, here's my art, enjoy it. Come on. If Lady Gaga started singing with Tony Bennett at the beginning of her career and everyone's showing everyone how amazing her vocal ability is, she'd just be like every other great vocalist. She didn't do that. She came off as a pop artist that shocked the world in a meat dress poker face, all this crazy stuff to get you to see her. That way, when she came out and did, look, I'm also an amazing singer, and was like, oh my God, she can do everything. That's a smart lady right there. Bloodhound Gang? The Bloodhound Gang had had a love child with an Oompa Loompa. Is that what you're saying? This really hurts. That can be. This has been. At this point, millions of years. There will be a yes, but I, I am a boy. It's no story. Which of us can do this? I said, ouch. This really hurts. This can well be. But this has been. At this point, millions of years. There will be a yes, but you're a girl. I That's the moment right there that every parent, all the religious parents went nuts. They said that she was lying in a bed rubbing herself in the video. All she did was make 
the the feminine V and do like this. And that was her rubbing herself in a bed. Which made all the parents freak out on the news, which made every kid watch the video. Because let's be honest, when it's pissing off the parents, kids are going to check it out. Come on, we have YouTube now. Okay, so <laughs> Bjork takes the three things that scare me the most of anything in the world, puts them in a video, and I'm like, cool. <laughs> Clowns, inappropriate dolls, and a horrible clashing together of hip hop and pop for no reason whatsoever. And she did it in the best way with a smile on her face. So that was uh, Bjork. <laughs> And for those, and look, let's seriously, for those who don't know, okay, um, mm, you had Bjork. It was really weird because when the Sugar Cubes hit big with Hit, um, they disbanded the same year. So it was really kind of weird. So the Sugar Cubes became really, really popular in 91, 92. But they also split up in 92 and Bjork went solo artist, which is really, it's a weird situation. Anyway, so there's Bjork and the Sugar Cubes, the greatest um, export from Iceland um, that we know of. Uh, the second greatest is Volcanic Ash from 2014. Sorry, sorry, I couldn't help myself, my bad. Um, how's everything going over there in Iceland? Hopefully you guys are hanging in there. Uh, no eruption yet? I'm on. Look, seriously, um, we can't go from coronavirus in 2020 to Krakatoa 2021, and it cannot be coming from the Icelandics, okay? You guys got to hook us up here. Come on. Y'all are good like that. All right, my name is Old School Nerd. Thank you so much. This is Throwback Thursday. No, this was not a metal throwback, but I had to do it because, let's be honest, Mr. Gunmanson, he wanted it. He got it. I promise the next one will be metal. Promise? Promise? All right, guys. <laughs> Bjork. <laughs> Bjork, 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 Bjork. No, seriously, guys. Bjork started a lot of things that we now take for granted. Lady Gaga, Melanie Martinez, she was the first one to come out and go, I'm weird, but it's beautiful. And it was. It still is.